Hello, I'm Gaia. Please come with me on a beautiful journey of discovery across an amazing continent. Islands of wildness, the natural lands of North America, climate change and the language of landscape, by Jim Bones. We think of Earth as the water planet, but consider this, the large blue sphere on the left represents all of Earth's crustal water, salty and fresh, liquid and frozen gathered into one ball, the medium blue sphere represents all of Earth's fresh liquid water on the surface and in the ground, the smallest blue sphere represents all of Earth's fresh liquid water contained only in surface lakes and rivers. It is my hope you see here the unifying continuity of life, and recognize how one region blends into another and perhaps most importantly, how your home fits within the larger landscapes of North America and the world. Out of this understanding a loving awareness may grow that we and the Earth are one. These are North American biome changes viewed from 18,000 years ago to the present, repeated three times. North American biomes have migrated for thousands of years, just like plants, animals and other life allies in response to the most recent Ice Age glacial advances and retreats. Today biomes continue to shift away from the equator and toward the poles in an accelerating response to worldwide warming. Tundras are turning into forests, forests are turning into grasslands and grasslands are turning into deserts. Even the seasons themselves seem to be turning upside down. What do you think causes recurring global climate change, and forces biomes to migrate? The primary factors affecting climate change and driving biome migrations are, variations in the energy output of the Sun, and its orbital relation to the rotating tilting and revolving Earth, periodically compounded by solar winds, cosmic rays, celestial impacts, gases from volcanic and oceanic upheavals, and of course the incredible effects of living beings themselves. We have learned to see the Earth our home as a whole organism when viewed from space. It is paradoxically both tough and fragile and because of its incredible diversity, it is also durable. Life itself maintains the atmosphere that sustains us. Countless tiny one-cell blue-green algae discovered photosynthesis over two billion years ago and transformed the early corrosive atmosphere with the oxygen we breathe today. They and many others are now threatened with suffocation as the oceans where they live become acidic from the increasing blanket of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Some things are not easily or quickly replaceable. Clean air, and water in particular are two of them. Water is the greatest natural treasure on Earth. It is the unique universe that enfolds and holds life together, and we must respect it and protect it if we hope to survive. Global warming, climate change, carbon dioxide tax, license to pollute, end of civilization, Species collapse? Mass extinctions? Honestly, do not be deceived. We and the rest of life are partly made of carbon. Carbon is not the whole problem, not the only problem. Although it is a huge concern, it is one we can deal with. We have reached critical tipping points. 
thresholds over which global self-regulating energy systems are irreversibly passing, driven in part by exponentially increasing numbers of eager human consumers, so many people releasing carbon, releasing lots of other poisons in so many ways, destroying critical native habitat, in the air, on land, and in the oceans, so many uninformed people, that is the problem. It is a dead end to pursue pollution reduction without population stabilization, and that will have to be achieved by informed personal choice. Overcrowding and impoverishment of the natural world around us has led on the one hand to escapist dreams of Eden and wilderness utopias, on the other hand, it has simultaneously provoked pessimistic attitudes of consumption and destruction and fostered species and racist bigotry. Fortunately, we have cultural rituals of renewal, seasonal celebrations, and art, to remind us of the truth. The images of art, song, dance and literature comprise the language of community accessible to all people. The essential inspiration for art throughout human existence has been, and continues to be, that local part of the earth we call home. A sense of pride in place endows people with a feeling of worth, and stimulates interest and determination to know and cooperate with the earth, rather than to subdue it. Our intuitive perception of beauty in nature is our direct personal awareness of the harmony and health expressed in the specific places where we live. The universal language of art, can show the way to understanding across cultures without disagreement or discord. We may not each be able to understand the scientific facts and figures of ecology, but we can all see and feel the beauty or ugliness of the world around us, and learn to recognize the conditions of the lands we call home and strive to improve them. What can each one of us actually do right now to improve the situation? We can make people aware that we all have skin in this game. We can use less of everything and we can use everything longer. We can promote the basic idea of growing the quality of life instead of the quantity, and we can set about preserving civilization for our children and grandchildren, and a tolerable planet to live on, who in their right mind would not act to save them? We can stop, think, observe, plan, simplify, triage, migrate, rehabilitate, adapt. We can plant seeds, grow plants, Propagate habitats wisely, with native, not invasive plants. These are beneficial things we can all do right now, when it comes down to survival or extinction. That is an individual matter, so every organism is a critical player. The sum total of the laws of the universe, nothing less than everything, supreme being, creator, nature, God, it is all sacred and it is all you. No matter what your spiritual or religious beliefs, you need the earth to practice them. So learn to love the earth. It may be the only place in the universe where we can really be human. A fact that still makes it possible to salvage something worthwhile from this dark time is the incredible ability of humans to change their minds, and then to change the world around them when truth is realized and the need for collective action becomes obvious. We share nature's wisdom and our task is to awaken awareness in everyone, not to give up. Join together now, speak out for the light and the life, for the truth and the beauty, and the love that is all nature, and rejoice. The most important thing, is to do the least harm, and find compassionate joy in the life you have right now. You are part of everything you see alive today, and related to the few who made it through all the previous great crises. Maybe one of yours will be lucky and make it through this one too.